Hey guys, what's up? Theo here. Uh, in this video, I'm going to demonstrate to you guys partial application and uh, currying. So this is um, sort of a complex tom topic, especially if you can't see the use case for it. Um, but basically, you can think of it uh, like the JavaScript bind keyword. And what bind does is it takes in uh, context and arguments and it returns to a new function with that context applied and optionally uh, the arguments, right? So I'm going to go through first an example of partial application, and this is done with closure, which is basically a function, a higher order function that returns another function, and then later when that's invoked, it has the scope of the first argument and the second argument, right? So we'll make a function called adder, and this is a function, right, that takes in um, num1, and what we can do is just do some console.logs here num1, just say num1, and this is going to return to us a function, return function inner, okay, this takes in num2, and now what we can do inside of here is to go ahead and invoke, um, or, or actually, no, not invoke, sorry, what we're going to do is just do our calculation, right, so we're going to return num1 plus num2, right, so normally this function, you might write it like this, function num1 and num2, and this is just going to return num1 plus num2. So what's the difference? Uh, adder with out partial application. So this is the difference, right? When we invoke this, adder with out partial application, and we pass this 3 and 4, and we go ahead and log that out to our console right here, we're going to get back 7, right? And it's all there. It's not partially applied. It's you get what you get. But when we have this function, I'm going to go ahead and delete this actually. Go to the output. When we go ahead and have this function right here, this adder, what we can do is we can say var, um, you know, var uh, first uh, function, or var partial rather, is going to be adder, and it's going to take in, we'll just say three. So now if we look at what partial actually is, let's look at this, let's run it. So it's just num and and uh, num one and it is go ahead and run that again. Num one is number three, and we can see uh, it's actually returning to us this function uh, inner right. So you know, let's look at what happens right. You can't actually call it right. It's not a property, but it's a method. Um, that we can invoke with the second argument applied, right? So now we can say partial, and what do we want to apply now? We want to apply six. And so what should we get back? Let's look at this, console.log, partial with six, and we run this, and now we'll get back nine, right? Because it's taken this num1, and it's taken num2, and it's added them together, right? So this has access to this num1 scope, but here we don't, if we try and log out num2, we can sort of see that it's not defined. Uh, because there's different scoping, right? This creates a scope environment, and this is the inner scope right here. I don't know why that ice cream truck's driving by, it's kind of weird. Um, so, right, you could also do this function. Let's say console.log partial. You can always also do this function invoking it like this, right? Three and six, to turning us to a function that's invoked. So let me do this, uh, show you guys this with, um, with uh, the bind keyword with JavaScript. Let me think if I can... Let me see if I can find a good example of how to use uh, bind, right? So maybe now uh, what we have is the same function greet, function greet, and it takes in a name and a last name, and it's just going to return name plus last name. Maybe we'll just do a little string right there. We'll set it return hi. And we will do that, All right? So now we call greet with um, Theo and Anderson, and we will log out greet. We're going to get hi Theo Anderson, right? So again, what happens when we just have one argument in there? It's going to say hi undefined. So what we can do with JavaScript is actually do this. We can say var bound, and we can do greet dot bind and null for the, this is the this context, it doesn't really matter in this case. And the next parameter right here is going to be uh, the argument that we want to pass in, right? So now if I pass in 
name, this is going to correspond to this first parameter. And now if we look at what bound actually is in our console here, it's obviously, you can't really see it because bind is uh, native code. But when we go ahead and invoke this with Anderson, we should get, um, let's see, console.log bound Anderson. We should actually get the same result, hi Theo Anderson, right? And if we uh, do nothing for this parameter and do um, Anderson right here, and now if we log out bound, oh, sorry, let me invoke it. If we log out bound right there, then we get hi null Anderson, right? Because we've we've partially applied in this case null for this first parameter, but we applied um, Anderson for this, right? And same would work if we just did. Theo right here and null as this value. Okay, so hi Theo null. So that's that's partial application. That's using the JavaScript bind keyword. And now let's look at how to write a curry function. So like that's good for you know uh, two parameters. But what if we have an infinite amount of parameters? Uh, what we have to look at is what's called uh, functions arity. And basically arity is just the amount of uh, parameters or arguments that are passed to a function, right? Or it's not how many you press, it's how many the function is set up with, right? So we can create this method again, just called um, just called adder, you know, function adder. And this takes in x, y, or we'll do, um, we'll do v, x, y, and z. And now if we were to go in here and console.log, I'm going to say r arity, this is the function's length, uh, what I can do, um, is, is just console.log its length. We can say console.log, or sorry, let me do it, do it like this. We'll say console.log adder.length. So a function has a length property on it. And now we look, see, so it's arity is four, right? And if we change this to three, we should get three. So that's how many arguments it was set up with, it's built with. So um, that's its arity. So what, what can we do with this, right? We can do the same sort of thing, we can say, return v plus x plus y plus z. Now let's go ahead and build out our curry function, which is just a general partial application function that is going to accept an unlimited amount of parameters. So the way that I built mine, I saw a few other examples, um, but I didn't want to make mine super complex. A lot of people use a while loop. I just did an if statement. So we're going to say var curry is a function. And what it does, it accepts a function. And that's how we're going to get its arity. And it also accepts um, args, and I'm going to use this to, instead of using the arguments keyword, have this um, spread out all the arguments we get into an array. And so down here we can say var arity is equal to fn.length, and now if we go ahead and log out the arity here, and we call curry with adder, like let's see what we get now. So we're getting uh, four, right, and that's again how many, that's not how many we're passing in, that's how many the function was built with. Um, so what we can do is we can say um, if args dot length is equal to the arity, right? If the args dot length is equal to the arity, let's go ahead and invoke this function that they passed in. Let's let's do the calculation. Let's invoke the function uh, with um, with the args spread out into each of these vx, y, z. Right. So this is the spread and this would be, or sorry, this would actually be the gather and this would be the spread. So otherwise though, what do we wanna do? I'm gonna, I think how I built it was with recursion. What we're gonna do is um, we're gonna say args equals args.concat and we're gonna concat, um, or sorry, what we're gonna do, let me think how I did, else args equals args.concat, um, not what we're going to do, we're going to set a return function, and this is going to have more args. I'm going to say args equals args.concat, more args, and now we're going to return curry. We're going to call this function again with the function and args. So let me see, it might have a few flaws here. Let's just try this out and look at what we're getting. Let's look at it in here. So curry with adder one two three four. And let's look at this uh, console.log curry. 
Let me do the result first. So this is the base case, right? Uh, result equals curry, and we'll pass it uh, adder. We're going to pass it one, two, three, four. And so now, if we go ahead and log out our result here, what are we going to get? We're going to get this um, the sum right here, one, two, three, four. So three plus four, seven. Seven plus two, nine, and nine plus one is ten. All right. So what happens though if we only uh, give it three arguments, right? So we have three arguments, and you can see right here it's returning to us another function. So if we go ahead and invoke this with three, and I think I did something wrong. Let me see. Let me look at the args. And yeah, I did something wrong. It's nested. So I think return function with. Okay, there we go. Yeah, I needed to spread those out too. We get confused sometimes. So you can sort of see here's the args, and its arity would be it's not equal there, but we can look at it args.length and arity. So let's check this out. If we come in here and do adder, and we have one, we can um, say var result equals and this is log result. Okay. We'll just log it out in there. So we can sort of see curry, adder, and one. We're not getting a result there, but we can keep going. We can do two, and then we can, I'm gonna get rid of that. We sort of see the arity still isn't equal, right? Because we only have two. Uh, now we've accepted five, and now if we do one more, we have seven, and you can sort of see it didn't give us that result until we pass in as many arguments as its arity. So that's my version of curry. Um, you know, maybe another function you might have with it would be, um, I'm trying to think what, what would another example be? I guess maybe, I guess mainly usually in calculations, you know, this is just a very unique function, but uh, you know, say again, we have a function greeter and this takes in a name and age, uh, a last name and a height. And we'll just say return, you are age years old, your name is plus name plus and your height is plus height and your last name is plus last name. So that's kind of a bit much, but um, sort of same sort of concept we can apply here. We can say curry, we're gonna pass greeter and I'm gonna say, um, I'm just gonna say, Null, 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 and null, right? So here we go. Uh, you are null years old. Your name is null, right? And so we've, you know, we can continue to do this, right? We could keep chaining this on, right? We could do this forever, which obviously you might want to put in a condition right there. But sort of see, you know, say Theo, um, 23, and then in this one, we could say Anderson, and we could say 16.5. So now we've passed all these functions in. Um, and using these spread and gather operators right here, uh, we built a generic curry function. So hopefully you guys enjoyed this, learned a little bit about functions, arity, um, and the length property. That was kind of cool. I didn't know that for a long time. So um, yeah, guys, thanks for watching, and I'll see you guys in the next video. Take care.